In this video, I'm gonna teach you another t-shirt design technique. I'm calling this technique the tall arc. I'm gonna teach you how to do it in three different applications. So whether you have Affinity Designer or you use Kiddo or Canva online, I'm gonna show you how to do it in all three of those. Let's go. Thanks for joining me on this video. My name is Juno with Detour Shirts. I've been designing and selling t-shirts online since 2005. And in this video, I wanna teach you another t-shirt design technique. You might wanna use this technique on different designs. You may have seen this on my latest, one of my latest videos with Snorg Tees, where I um, look at some of the designs that they have. You may have seen this right here. Um, these are examples of how they use it. And it's really simple. The hardest part actually is curving that tech. So some applications make it really easy to do that and other applications are just a little bit more difficult. So I'm gonna show you how to do that technique with the text. I'm not gonna do the full design because all you need to do once you get that text is to drop in a, a graphic in there and you'll be fine. You can see these are pretty simple. You can add more things. I'll show you how to do that uh, in Affinity Designer, Kittle, and Canva. I'm gonna start with Affinity Designer first because I think this is the easiest way to do it. And then Kittle is probably second and then Canva is just a little bit more difficult. I'll show you how to do all three. So let's go into Affinity Designer first and I'll show you how to do that. All right, so here I am in Affinity Designer. You can see I opened up a artboard already. This artboard is 4,500 by 5,400, the Merch by Amazon size. I still like using that size even though we don't have to use that exact size, it still helps. Uh, I'm gonna do something real easy. You can see I have a tall graphic right here and this is where the tall arc works the best. So if you have a tall graphic, like I said in my other video, this is where you're gonna want the text coming up here and then kind of rounding and then come down here. And the easiest way to do that in Affinity Designer is to get your shape here. So this rounded rectangle shape, just put it like this. Um, you can put it in the back like that and then make sure that it's centered. Uh, all of these are centered so we can do this and this. Let's do this centered first, boom. And then this one centered, boom. And then get this right here and then you can round the corners just a little bit more so like that. Okay, and then you can make this longer just so it's straight, not that long, but you get the idea. So the text is just gonna go on this line here. So watch how you do this. Click on here, click on the text, and then as you hover over it, you'll see it turn from an A to a T with a squiggly line. You wanna click this when it is that, and then move these triangles to the bottom. So here at the bottom, and then there's another one that should be right here. Move that to the bottom right there. And then we're gonna just type here. So let's type in this city or the city that never sleeps. So let's do that. The city that never sleeps. And then space, maybe we do a dash New York. Now you may not want to use that font, but you can also um, make it centered. So click on this and do that. Let's find a good font for this. So I'm going to do Brawls Rough. You can see it's all caps. Um, this one kind of have to change out some of these. Let's do uh, Y. Yeah. So one thing that's nice about this uh, Affinity Designer is you can make the text bigger. There's a trick, a shortcut, select all of this. And when you're over here, if you have a scroll wheel, you can scroll it up and down, check this out. So just scroll it until it reaches the bottom there and do that. There you go. So you can play around with the shape and um, things by moving things around and move this bigger or whatever you want. So. Um, whatever the shape is in the beginning, that's what we'll do. So if you want it tighter, make that shape tighter. If you want it bigger, then you can do that. But that's real easy how to do it. You can see it's not quite a circle here, but if you play around with this, you, you could make it more of a circle by pulling this down and doing that. There you go. 
So you can see it, it's not as tight anymore because we made the shape just a little thicker. You can see that. So there you go. The city that never sleeps, New York. Now you can put things in here. You can make this a, a different picture or whatever it is. You can also tighten this up so you can hold down option and kind of tighten up the things right here, right? So have fun with this. This is the real easy way to do it on Affinity Designer. Next one I'm gonna show you is how to do it on Kittle. So I'm here on Kittle. I already made my new project here, uh, 4,500 by 5,400. One of the things that I like to do on Kittle, if I'm gonna do this on Kittle, is I'm gonna go here on Elements and grab a shape. So they have all these shapes. They have a shape that looks like a tall arch. So uh, this one right here, just click on it and it should add it to the board. You can see right there. And this is just gonna be like a guide. So you can see, you know, we're not gonna type on this, but we're gonna make it so that we know where it is. And I'll show you why that's important later. So you may wanna lock that down. And the way to lock that down is to go to layers. I'm gonna move myself away from here. So you can see down here is layers and we're gonna just lock that basic shape. We can hit the lock here like that. Okay, so that means now I can't click it accidentally because it's locked. If I want to click it again, I'll have to come back here. So uh, I'll unlock this and bring myself back. All right, so the thing I'm going to do is I'm going to type some text. So you can just do T for that. And it's right there. And I'm going to type um, whatever it is. Uh, let's just use the same thing, the city. And let's move this up here. You're looking for that diagonal arrow and just pull it like that. And I'm gonna change this and look for a font. I'll show you what I what font I wanna use. I wanna use fonts that have the variable here. And this one does have the variable, so it, it could work. I just don't wanna use the caps. So I'm gonna turn off the caps or not hit caps. Uh, the city that never sleeps. And I think we did New York. Oh, we did it like dash New York. Okay, so there's a couple ways you can do this on Kittle. The first one is I'm gonna go to custom. So I'm gonna hit custom like that. I'm gonna bring this last one down here. This one, the first one down here and the middle one right in the middle here. And it doesn't look like much yet, but we're gonna play with these handles. So this handle goes up, this handle goes up like that. And these, using our guide here, goes around like that. Now we can pull these down too. So if we wanna pull these down, you can see how that works. And you wanna make these straight. So straight from the bottom like that, straight from the bottom, we can move these around and pull this out. And one of the reasons why I want variable is we can move these, make this bigger. So let's say we want this down further. Just click on, well, let's make sure we got the right shape first. Um, we can pull these up like that, you can see. So you're just gonna have to kind of play around with this to make it rounded and straight at the same time. So these two dots should be about at the same spot. And if you want this a little higher, you can. You can see that works like that. So, so in Kittle, you don't type on a shape, but you can move things around and they have all these transformation tools that you can do, use that. So the reason I want variable is now I can go on this variable and click on it and I can make it touch the bottom. So if I want it to do like that, you can see I can make it bigger or smaller, which is really nice. And again, I can just put in the picture here um, I don't know if they have one. Let's do elements and illustrations and um, building. Oh, Empire State's building. Nice. Um, yeah. No, we don't have to use the Empire State building. We can use anything that's tall. So, you know, what if we want to use this instead? This would work here too. So perfect. It's a tall graphic and maybe it like covers it like that. And maybe this right here could be a background color. It could be blue. So color that shape, you know, maybe a lighter blue or something like that, right? 
So that's how one way that you could do it and maybe put some clouds back here, maybe put some buildings back here or whatever you need. So you can see it real easy to do it that way in Kittle. The other way you could do it in Kittle takes a little bit more effort and but I think it makes it a little more rounded and that is with a circle and then two straight lines. So let me show you how that works. Um, it's going to take a little bit of finesse here. So you can see it says that never sleeps dash. So let's let's try and do that. Um, I'm going to do I'm going to take this away and I'm going to type out again T the that never sleeps. Okay, so instead of custom now we're going to do circle and make sure that circle is as big as this circle here. So this one's just a little bit more difficult and we don't want it that big. So let's turn it maybe 500 and now we want to get it so that it comes to the straight part. So that's where the variable comes in. So you can see right to where it kind of makes it straight. Oh, I forgot a letter. Let's do this. S and dash. That should give us a little more space. Yes. So right where it kind of turns in, you can stop there. And then do a T and put the city. And let's do that at the same size as this. So this one was 500. So we're going to do this at 500. And make sure that it, whoops. Okay, we're going to do this at 500. You can see it's a little more tricky. We're going to turn this now. 90 degrees. And we're going to do the variable. So if we are right here, let's see how much we have to do it. The city, you can see that the city that never sleeps. And then this could be New York again. So holding down option and dragging here and then turning this that way, this could say New York. Let's pull it down. And you can see New York's too long now, so we can hit the variable and kind of make it so it works. There you go. The city that never sleeps again, a different way. And you, you probably put this in the front or put those in the back. So just uh, right click and to the front city that never sleeps. So that's another way that you could do it in Kittle. And in fact, that's how you're going to do it in Canva. So let me show you how you do it in Canva. Same technique that we're going to do um, with the rounded because Canva only does that curve here. And then it also does straight. So one more thing before we move on to Canva is I did this in Kittle right here. You can see I did it in that way where we have the circle and then two of these straight ones. So I'm going to put this on Kittle as a template and you can use it uh, to do your own. Don't use the same graphic. You can switch out the graphic to whatever you want and you don't have to have bottom text at all, but just in case you want, it's there and you can kind of use this as a guide for your tall arc design. So here we are in Canva. I kind of um, started already, but you can see this one right here uh, has the effect of curve. So you can make it bigger or smaller. Um, I'm going to just make it right there like that. And then we said the city that never sleeps. Whoops. Dash. Now you can use any font, but let's see how this works. So you can see that one is just a little too big. So when we do that, we can move it and kind of make it like that and turn it. Now we can use any font. This font's a little different. So it's a little um, longer, a little wider. So we have to make some adjustments. 
but that's okay. So once you have that one, you can see this is 281, the font size. So we want this one to be 281 just to match. So we get 281 and we do the city. Now this one doesn't have a variable uh, width like the other one. So we're gonna just have to kind of play around with it. Now you could do, um, if it's too long, so let's see what happens, 281 on this side. I'll show you how to adjust. And New York, right? That actually works kind of good. So you can see this one's a little longer than that. So one thing we could do is we could take the T from this one. So let me show you. If we did a space and a T, kind of fake it and take the H out of this one, the T out of this one, right? And then we can kind of butt this up against here to make that work. And then you can see it just a little bit better like that. And then move things around to make it, make it work. So there you go. That's how you can kind of fake it in Canva where it looks like it's one thing that's connected, but really it's three things. So you got the straight one here, the curved one here, and another straight one here with your graphic in the middle. Now you can use any tall graphic. You don't have to do it with New York and you can change the background and do all kinds of things. But the thing about it is to get this shape is, is what you want. So I showed you how to do it in Affinity Designer, in Kittle, and in Canva. Uh, it should be the same for Illustrator um, to type on a path, the same as Affinity Designer, but if, you d if they don't have that type on a path, you can see this is another workaround to do that. So that is it for this video. Hopefully this video was really helpful for you. Now you know how to do that tall arc in a lot of different applications. Hopefully you have one of those applications. If this video is really helpful for you, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed to this channel already, make sure to hit that subscribe button right there. And the question of the day for this video is, what is a tall graphic that you're going to use for this design? Let me know in the, in the comments there. We use the Empire State Building. You could use a a tall building. We used the Statue of Liberty. It could be a tall flower, a tree. Uh, there's lots of different examples. Let me know what you're going to use in there. Have fun with this one. I think this is a graphic style that's getting more and more popular. So you'll see it as uh, really good for vintage stuff and especially for tall graphics. So if you have any of those, just keep it simple like you've seen on Snork Tees. Have fun with this one, guys. If you want to see other t-shirt design techniques, click on these videos right here. And as always, guys, keep creating and keep learning. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.